Dr. Romano, looks like you're up to organic chemistry again. Hi, I'd like to go over a question with you today on polymers. Polymers are extremely important in everyday life. You probably come across them all the time. For example, nylon is a polymer. Lucite is a polymer. Teflon is a polymer. And then biopolymers such as DNA, RNA, you're familiar with from biology. Things like cellulose represent polymers, as does proteins. Let's have a look. Polymers represent a large molecule made by linking of small repeating units of small molecules called monomers. For example, a whole bunch of glucose monomers could be put together to make cellulose. Now, there's three different arrangements we can have. And let's take a look over here. We can have atactic, syndiotactic, and isotactic. If something is atactic, it's going to be amorphous, means it's not going to be crystalline. Um, and we're going to have random configuration. For example, um, if X represents a group, say, for instance, it's a methyl group, or it could be an ester group or a fluorine. Notice this means it's going up. So up, down, up, up, up. Notice there's no nice repeating unit. So it's random. It's atactic. Here is syndiotactic, which means we have alternating configuration. We can, we can have a group pointing up, down, up, down, etc. And then isotactic is when we have an identical configuration. All the groups are going in the same direction. The key thing to get out of this is to understand if it's atactic, we're going to have a solid polymer that's amorphous. If it's Syndio or isotactic, it's going to be more crystalline. Always a tough question on an exam to remember. So make sure you got that. Now, in order to initiate a polymerization, we have different mechanisms. We can have a radical mechanism, cationic mechanism, or an anionic mechanism. Radical initiation is often done with things like hydrogen peroxide. Cationic with things like Lewis acid, such as boron trifluoride. And an anionic polymerization would be done with things like potassium amide and sodamide. Let's do an example. Let's take sodamide and let's remove off the Na and we have the NH2 um, group here. Now, what I'm going to do is attack an alkene. Normally, nucleophiles such as amide don't attack alkenes. But notice that the alkene has an electron withdrawing group on it. Now, that group is going to decrease the electron density and therefore make that carbon right here more electrophilic. So, as you can see, when I do the attack, I attack the carbon or the alkene, the electrons move over, and I form a carbation that's stabilized by this electron withdrawing group. Okay. Once we have a stabilized carbanion, we're ready for our next cycle. This can attack a second molecule to give us this, and then it goes on, and we attack another molecule, and we repeat this many, many times. Here I put an X. Normally, we put a little N, so I'll change that. So we're going to repeat this thousands and thousands of times, and we get what's called a polymer. In the next clips, I'll show you how to do one of the other mechanisms, either radical or cationic. But as you can see, this was a good example of how I did an anionic polymerization using potassium or um, sodium on an amide ion. All right, I hope this gives you a good understanding or at least partial understanding of what we do in polymer chemistry. Dr. Romano, do I need to know this for the dad exam? I sure haven't done this tape for my health. Yes, oh. good day to you. Okay, Dr. Romano, I'll make sure to know it. She said, just asked a question. Good day to you, sir. Polymers.